what is going on EDC people and what is our journey today uh, first off if you're not subscribed to my channel uh, EDC journeys please take a moment and subscribe I'm trying to get to 500 uh, to do a giveaway and uh, so yeah now that that business is out of the way I will move on to what I want to talk about today which is um, number one of course of knife and then number two uh, some of my next few videos what I'm going to be doing and uh, why I've been a little bit lagged in releasing some videos lately it should all be self-explanatory in the end and we're back and this is the Ironfly uh, Zesty. So this is the new knife to show you. Um, it was actually donated to the channel from um, Lefty EDC, who turns out to be a pretty cool guy. Uh, not just because he gave me a knife, but because, you know we had a chat and um, he shot me this knife. It's my Carta handles. It's VG10 steel, which I actually don't have a problem with. It's got a great drop point shape, a good sharpening choil, a nice plunge. It's a liner lock wire pocket clip. It has a glass breaker. You don't normally see, you know, it's just kind of one of those things that's like, you don't, it's barely there, but it's, hey, why not? And um, it's pretty nice looking. It's on, I believe, bearings. I have not taken it apart. But yeah, I, I would imagine it's bearings just based off of the action alone. Um, look at the look at the action on this guy. It reminds me a lot of the um, Free Tiger FT903, but this one is a better steel and better material on the handle. But I wanted to show you a new knife in this video, and so here is a new knife that is really quite nice, has amazing action. Uh, it's a you know um, flipper tab VG10, nothing. Nothing that people haven't seen before. If you're knife people, you know, it's a fairly neutral handle. Um, reverse carry is possible. Your thumb would just rest right up on top of that uh, ceramic ball. Um, it's got that rib in the middle that really fills up your palm. It makes it feel nice. It's got really good jimping. The swedge work is really nice and sharp on it. And by sharp, I mean in, in, in looks, not feel. It is very well um, the corners are well, I guess, crushed, you could say. They're not, like, sharp corners. So, it's not necessarily crowned, but it's not, it, it, it's, it's definitely been thought about. Um, but I just love that blade. It's nearly a full, uh, straight grind. What is that, a saber grind or something? When it goes from a thicker to a, you know, a V, a very thin V. Um, and then the swedge is, allows for less material to go through. You know, uh, imagine you're cutting something, the swedge, it kind of goes in, so it's less material gliding through, less friction. Um, it's going to be a good slicer. And uh, let's, you know what, for the sake of it, this isn't necessarily a review, but do, 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 go to millimeters, zero me out. The stock thickness is... 3.4 millimeters 3.4 millimeters which is 0.13 inches 0.6 inches with the, on the rib if you come off the rib it's about 0.5 so it feels about normal in hand it doesn't feel overly thick um, it's just that that rib does add to uh, the feeling in hand in, in a good way it has a nice finish. It's a belt satin, but it's a very nicely done belt satin. I don't have a problem with the logo. I actually think it's kind of cool. Kind of reminds me of a Spyderco-ish type logo. On the opposite side, you see VG10, Zesty, and I guess their model number. Um, it has a very nice edge. Very nice sharpening choil. Um, and it's a liner lock. And it's got amazing action. So really, that's what I wanted to show you. It's a new knife. Okay, so take a look at that. If you like the looks of it, take uh, Google it. You know, you'll find Ironfly's website. I don't have the box handy. I do have the box, but I don't have the box handy. 
or else I would show you. Let's look at the centering. Nice and straight. It is. It might look deceiving on the camera, but it is in real life nice and straight. And they do maximize the amount of space you can get in, or the amount of uh, blade to, you can fit in this handle really nicely. So I quite like it. The Iron Fly Zesty in VG10, keeping it at a reasonable price. VG10 is a decent steel. I don't care what other people say. You might not like it. That's okay. My opinion is it's, it's not a bad steel. Okay, moving forward. That's the new knife to show you. Uh, and just to give you an idea of the size, just because, uh, I'll do a couple comparisons really quick. Here's the, uh, it reminds me a lot of the Elementum. The ele it's a little bit larger than the Elementum. There's the spider Hodelica. So it's larger than both of those. What else do I have sitting here? Uh, let me put this in the middle of the screen a little better. Let's get rid of the sticker for now. I think we've, you get the point. I want you to subscribe. Please subscribe. <laughs> um, the more people that I have subscribed, the more my message gets out there. Okay, so the handle length on this does kind of match the shaman's handle length. It's not going to be the overall size. The shaman's going to overdo it in the end, but the handle length is about the same. And then the blade length is nearly the same. Again, it's a more robust version on the shaman, obviously, but as far as length and geometry goes, minus the finger choil, um, you really have a quite similar... Uh, uh, edge geometry and handle length as the shaman so that's actually a really interesting uh, comparison and i wonder how that compares to just out of curiosity say something like the pm3 okay so the handle is longer than the pm3 you know the pm3 handle is a little bit more chunky in the width version or width width uh, area ignore that mark i've got to get some i i got to drop a super glue in there and that really bugs me and then the blade is dwarfed by this long drop point so it's closer to a shaman than it is a, P, a pm2 or i'm sorry a pair of three um yeah Okay, so that is the new knife. I'll give you one more good look at it. It is a sharp looking knife. And again, I, I say sharp in the sense of good looking. It is also sharp in the sense of the edge. <laughs> but I like the micarta. It's got nice full steel liners that are uh, got some weight relieving on it. Um, not uh, just a touch, just one little weight relief hole on the liner lock side. It does have to be cleaned out. I have carried it a couple days just to try it. But every single edge is nicely uh, broken down so that it's not sharp, uh, especially all along the flipper tab. It's got a decent looking pivot, minimal looking hardware. The uh, pocket clip, as I said, is wire, but it's, it's like one of these jabbers where you, uh, you loosen this somehow. There's a screw or something inside of there. You loosen this and flip it to the other side. So it is ambidextrous, but it's an interesting way they do it with a minimal backspacer, which is just fine. Um, it gives you something to put your finger on if you go in reverse grip. Um, and it, I'm sure it gives some stability to that um, glass breaker as well as giving some comfort to your palm if you're going you know if you're going like this and doing a draw cut that back spot right there is what goes into your palm so it is often used that way and i can see why you you know you would want a back twister there to push so i really like the design and i think the action is amazing for what it is if you're interested in a very simple uh, fairly budget um friendly edc full-size edc um knife with decent materials take a look at this guy i'll try to remember to leave a link in the description i'm not good at doing that unfortunately but you know take a oops oh, i just knock everything over 
Uh, take a good look, you know, again, VG10, I'll just go over it one more time, VG10 blade, nearly full flat, um, with a high, high swedge up here, which is just fine, great access to the lock bar, you have um, uh, attention to detail on the edges, are all crushed down, I guess I'm using that word crushed, but again, uh, you see there's no, no sharp edges, especially around the flipper tab area you do have that rib as i said that fills up your palm you have the glass breaker which is nearly not noticeable which is why i like it it's not like a big extra thing like a microtech where it's this big honking extra thing it's just there and, and, and if you ever need it, it you have it and that's kind of cool and then the action the jimping is decent take a look at the top the, the, I mean, it it doesn't, oops, I'm sorry, I keep, the swedge really takes care of the edging, there's no sharp edges, it, I mean, it's, it's not crowned again, I don't want to say you call it crowned, but it's not, um, the edges have been broken, I guess is the term I'll use, and I'm hoping you can see that through the camera really well, I'm really at a difficult angle to see the camera, uh, let's see, while my screen is scratched up. Anyone know any good tips on how to clean up a scratchy screen on an iPhone? Anyways, my Carta handle, not G10. And there it is, guys. Very simple wire clip. Can't be much more, like, uh, friendly than that. And it's got the, a, a great fidget factor just because of the action. So that's the Ironfly Zesty. Take a look at it if you're interested. There you go. Oh, 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 oh. Almost forgot something important. Let me move so I can see the sun. Okay, it's all zeroed out. So in ounces, 4.1. And that's 116.5 grams. 116.5 grams. We use my caliper. The blade from, well, depending on where you measure, from tip to, well, I'm going to imagine, uh, I'm going to imagine a police officer is going to say about three and a half inches, depending on where you measure from, because the cutting edge alone is, I mean, I can't even... You know, three and a half inches, three and a half inch cutting edge, and not much more. Three point six for a um, a total length, and then your handle with the glass breaker is four point six, probably four point six one. Uh, really, because I was not on the top of the ball. Um, so 4.6. So no matter which no matter which way you look at it, it's about eight inches long uh, overall, and four and a half inches of it. Four and a half inches of it is your handle basically. It's just very deceiving because your handle kind of goes like this. So it's like where do you measure it from? But uh, you know, uh, from he from from here to here is four and a half inches. This is about eight inches from tip to heel, not including the glass breaker. So, um, cool knife. Uh, I mentioned that you could get it on uh, Etsy. It wasn't Etsy. It was like uh, ironfly.com or, or ironfly knives. I will, uh, if I haven't already, I will put a link at least on the screen. And hopefully I will put it in the description. Uh, I'm just not very good at remembering to do that. Uh, so yeah, and oh, I really wanted to bring the shaman back out and recompare that to it with you, but I forgot it naturally. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a full everyday, you know, a full a full size, what I consider a full size EDC, um, in most every sense you know i mean for edc and that is a really nice blade for it and uh, it's nice and thin and let's take those measurements and be that way we can be done with this little segment in millimeters and this uh measurement phase 3.45 on the stock 
um, down here towards the tip where it, it, it has that thick little peaking uh, peaking 2.78 right there or 2.70 rather I'm sorry um, and then it comes right down to an acute tip um, Point six seven millimeters uh, on the tip. Uh, Fifteen point four millimeters, or point six zero. Okay, so point uh, six zero on the handle, and then of course you've got the wire clip, which you can't get very much more standard than that. And, um, like it or not, uh, it's a very good clip. It's an effective one. And, um, as far as the billboarding went, um, I'm not sure why you put the model on it. But, um, you know, I think all in all, it's pretty, uh, refreshing to see, uh, a, a slicey knife. And, uh, with, with good action. In, in the full size category for a decent price um, accessible to a lot of people so check them out if you like them um, check out the jimping on the thumb stud and notice that it's really easy to just grab and pull I mean it's really pretty simple there is also a slight landing zone right here which works also as a contouring part of the handle. So it's kind of cool. Okay. Next up, uh, we're talking about uh, my frequency of recording has been lessened because I'm trying to do some uh, remodel, not necessarily remodel, well, I guess you could basically call it remodeling of a couple of rooms in the house. That having been said, 14C28N <laughs> uh, is a steal. It's a steel that's used in a lot of, um, it, it, it's a lot of lesser priced knives are starting to use this steel type as opposed to D2 or um, 8CR or anything like that. And there's a lot of great things about 14C28N. Um, it's a Sandvik steel, you know, I mean, you can just Google that. I'm not a metal, metalolog, metal, metalologist, metal, metal, yeah, whatever. Um, but it's 14C28N. These knives that you see on the screen right now are all, for, they're all different, but they're all 14C28N steel. Okay. And I think I have one more somewhere. Yes, that's it right there. These are all 14C28N. And over the course of the next several days, and by several days I mean like four days, I'm going to test these in, in each in individual ways, doing that <clears throat> room, room transitioning. Specifically, I have my eyes set on the Kershaw Blur, number one, because it's the, um, well, I guess it's not the least expensive, but... It's the least used one I have that you see here. So it has a recurve in the blade. I don't use it as often as I could or should because it is a good knife. It's aluminum. It's got this um, grippy stuff. It's uh, the 14C28N steel, but it's got that recurve, right? So it's just not one of the ones I grab first. And I'm going to use this to remove the wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. And I'm going to rely on that recurve. And I'm going to report back to you about that. And this is all mostly to talk about 14C28N. But also to speak about these some, some of these new knives. I just put a little bit of KPL heavy on this. I think I might, I might have made a mistake by doing that. I should have gone with KPL regular. Because I think it made it a little less droppy. Instead of more of what I... I, I it, it, out of the box it was a smooth close. I was looking to finally drop a, a, one, you know, a couple drops of oil in it. 
I put uh, KPL in, but I chose heavy because I thought maybe it would make it like just glide shut. But more, more or less, it's kind of just thickening it, thickening it up. So I think I'm gonna let this play out, see how it goes. But I'm gonna switch over to regular KPL. By the way, if you're ever wondering uh, what I use for oil, I have used many different things. I can give you, if you don't want to use this, I can give you other uh, choices to use. If you have uh, are either A, on a budget, or B, looking for something just laying around your house. But as a general rule of thumb, I really like KPL, Knife Pivot Lube. And uh, it comes in a two-pack if you choose to get this one. I got a two-pack. Okay, so it comes with this little baggie, a little card, and you get KPL Heavy in, in regular KPL. So I thought that was a great uh, way to jump into it because that way I had one of each. Um, the heavy is used, uh, the, the regular is used in more circumstances than the heavy, but uh, anyways, just getting that off uh, so people know. If they ever want to know what oil I use, that's typically what I use. Um, while we're talking about details, I really like the riffle. Um, it's my Carta handle. Um, it's got that backspace with the hidden, hidden lanyard tube hole area access, deep pocket carry, uh, deep carry pocket clip. Um, we all know it can flick open, and it's got the tab. Oop! And I hit the freaking tripod. Um, it's a great looking knife. Well, it's 14C28N. It's an extreme... Oops, there's some oil right on that blade. Let me get that off of there. Let me see here. So yes, I can... As you can see, I just recently put that drop of oil on. So it's going to last a little while. And maybe it will break in just... Not break in, but settle in just right. But uh, otherwise, I think I, th I should have used the regular on it, probably. But um, it's, you know, again, it's not necessarily crowned, but those corners are broken down. You've got a nice, robust end until the tip, and then it comes down to a fairly acute tip. It's got a nice, flat grind down, and it's a fairly large knife, so you've got a, a pretty good slicer here. Okay, and in the same sense, this is a Tucson... I want to say it's the 128. It's um, a night morning design, I believe. Yes, I believe so. I'm trying to see this through the camera. Yes, and clearly 14C28. But it is a titanium frame lock. And then we've got the Orion Solaris. Okay, a fairly new release that's not... Um, the batch is sold out, but it's coming back at, at some point, so it is still going to be available. So as far as I know, one way or another, all these knives are still semi-easily available or will be soon after uh, you watch this, as of now. So these knives I'm going to test heavily uh, because I really want to dig into 14C28 and, and test it out. I really do. So look for some videos on these knives. These I was like Neves knives. These knives, uh, fairly soon. Two more things for this video, guys. First of all, um, as you may know, I sometimes get knives through the Apex Passer on group, um, which I'm eternally grateful for because sometimes I cannot afford or want to dive into buying a knife that uh, I want to look at still and it'll allow me to show you guys and I'm still new at this so it lets me look at knives that I won't, wouldn't necessarily always uh, purchase or want to you know drop that much money in that said in the group uh, an item an edge pro um, a sharpener uh, became available to take a look at you know, one of those big machines that you set up, kind of like a cami, where you, and I'm going to adjust the thing here while I talk, um, where you actually, like, you know, mount the knife and line it up, and uh, blah, 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 it's, and then it's, you get, like, an arm and whatever. So, the first time I did it, the very, very first time, I wanted to use a knife that I used for testing, mostly. So, ignore the scratches you see on the blade. It's not all from what I did on the on this Edge Pro. It's This is a knife that I use for a lot of different things for testing. What I want to show you specifically on this is the edge, the bevel. Okay, and the, 
and I'm going to preface this once again by saying this was my very first attempt without really much knowledge of it. I really just dived into it. So it's a Ganzo knife, but take a look at the bevel just by going through the, pro the, the progression of stones that came with it. Now this is D2, and I know it's not perfect. But, I mean, that is some pretty impressive results for just jumping on it and trying. Now, I am going to do a little more serious now, because that was a straight blade, a Ganzo that I was not so, you know, concerned about um, necessarily hurting if, if I didn't do, if I messed it up. I'm going to try again, now that I have a good feel for it, I'm going to try again um, with S35VN on a, an actual drop point. An actual drop point that needs some help, by the way. It needs, uh, this this blade needs an edge. Uh, pretty, pretty badly. You know, it's sharp enough that I could cut through cardboard right now if I had to, but uh, it's not as sharp as I normally keep it. And why not try the elementum with such a, you know, standard kind of shaped drop point blade on the the uh, edge pro so that is coming up too the, all that having been said uh whoop let me hit everything again the for for those of you who enjoy my traditional pocket knives um uh, i always of course have a traditional in my pocket this is the one i have today just the denim micarta work knife um nothing crazy but uh something you know fun to do work with uh, great for opening boxes uh, any utility cuts not the best steel in the world but this is what I want out of a slip joint um, and I like it I carry it in the uh, Rough Rider slip which are available at Smoky Mountain Knife Works I suggest putting some leather oil on it or mink oil or whatever you know something just because otherwise it is dry but but if you do it at least once maybe twice it makes it really supple and, and form to the knife that you have in there otherwise i highly recommend the sheaths you can see i need to do this one again because it's starting to get a little dry down there but uh this was just with one coat this was just with one coat um of the uh, leather oil or leather treatment stuff so i'm going to do that again okay uh what was my last point there was something else oh yeah that's right that's right being outdoors doing the mowing the lawn and getting the flowers ready and here i'm just going to pan up for a second you're going to see my patio table extend a little bit you could see the flowers maybe if i lift you up you know, just uh, some doing, kind of getting some leaves together, mowing the lawn, blah, blah, blah. Let me get you back down to my normal view. All of that has had me thinking about, not thinking about, but, you know, in the in the spirit of fixed blades. Oops, that was supposed to be a better dramatic effect. Here's the sheath for this uh, off-grid knives. And it does say, it's hard to see, it's so... Hard to see. It says "Off Grid Knives" and it has their logo on it. But this is, I guess, Kydex. I don't know. I have it. Uh, I took the bolt, the screws out, and did it for Scout Carry. But it is this. It's Aus Eight, A U S Eight, not Aus Six, not Aus Ten, but Aus Eight, which is a decent steal for what this is. This is a fixed blade with a paracord wrap around the handle, obviously. Jimping in great places. Ergonomics actually better than you would imagine. I'm just not much of a fixed blade guy, but wow, would this be a great camping tool. And you know what? I'm sick of waiting and going like this and saying, I need subscribers, I need 500 subscribers to give something away. I want to give something away right now to the 300 of you, 300 plus of you who have subscribed to me so far. In the comments, if you want this knife, I have the box, all the stuff that, all the materials that come with it, the, the Kydex sheath or plastic sheath or whatever this is, and the knife. If you are legally capable of having this knife, I'm not gonna, I'm not a lawyer, I'm just a YouTuber, um, and you want it, leave a comment on this video that says, um, I don't know. Let's say, 
Hoglet. H O G L E T. And I'll put that word right across the screen. Hoglet. If you put a t comment in there, I will choose a date. Uh, let me figure that out in a minute. But uh, and and I will search for terms for Hoglet. That's if you stayed in this video long enough. Now you have a giveaway opportunity. Please give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, you have to be subscribed to win. So just subscribe now. If you like this knife, do as I just said. Leave a comment with at least that word, hoglet. Maybe some feedback on the video. Maybe some... Anything. Advice for future videos. Whatever you want to do. Whatever you'd like. Whatever would... Uh, whatever you think a good idea would be. Actually, leave me a comment telling me what you think a good idea to um, further my channel along would be. Include the word hoglet. And, and let's see, today is Sunday, Mother's Day. By Wednesday, I will close this down at some point Wednesday and uh, choose a winner by Wednesday or, or, or post the winner by Thursday. Okay, there you go, guys. Thanks a lot. Thumbs up, subscribe. That's where I've been. That's where I'm going. Have a great week. Hey, thanks for tuning in to EDC Journeys for the video on the Ironfly SC. I believe the website to find that is ironflyknives.com. Thank you, Lefty EDC, for providing the knife to me, and hope everyone has a great week.